this many people to show up today. In the words of my father, makes my heart soar like a hawk. These are a lot of prayers going on today. Each drum is the heartbeat of our people. And every time you beat your drum, that's your heart saying a prayer. And it is our belief that when the ego, when we pass away into the next world, the ego takes us um, to our, our creator. And it takes our prayers up. And the ego keeps soaring around and around us. And every prayer, every song that you sing, um, the ego takes it and brings it to creator and to our ancestors. I am here today. I've been asked by the press in the, uh, the press gathering yesterday, why are you here? I'm here because this is a matter of life and death. Sends oil and gas where my my dear sisters Ariel and Melina live that they're, they're blowing out of a big giant tank um, pure carbon monoxide 24 7 I when I walked the tar sands I saw one bird it used to be pristine forest there's one bird I saw and it was dead on the ground I've seen him pull a big bear out of the toxic trailing ponds and Shame. when I come home, I thought, do, do we need this? Do we want this? No! It's, when there's a, a dump, a spill, or a blow up, it's either stay here and die or move. Do we want to leave our homeland? Do we want to leave Vancouver because of the ships when they spill? It's not if they spill, it's when they spill. No! So. We're here to, I want, I hope Justin is watching this to see all of you people, big, all I see is a big, it looks like a big dessert platter, all the people standing there. And we're all saying at the same time, no! 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 No pipelines! No tar sands! No tar No tankers! No tankers! That's what we want. That's what we're saying here right now. And Justin, I hope you're watching this. Woo! I can't, say, I can't really say. I'm, I'm told I always got so much to say, and you say three minutes. Um, <laughs> and my son does this to me. <laughs> All you ones with um with whale signs, if you hold it up, I'm just gonna sing two verses of our whale song. Where's that big whale? <laughs> Different. We need to protect these ones who cannot speak. We gotta be their voice. 
Hajka. We are standing up together to protect what's sacred. Oh, more! In 2013, January 25th, we signed at the Yankton Sioux Reservation the International Treaty to Protect the Sacred Tar Sands Projects, which was, at the time, Toshka Ruben George was there. Also, uh, other relatives came to back us up. And that since was signed here in Vancouver, in Ottawa, in many different places and it helped stop the Keystone XL pipeline. So I want to express from Faith Spotted Eagle, chairperson of our Yankton Sioux Treaty Committee, her full support. She was here, and especially to Ta'a, she says, and to give you a know she's standing beside you, Reuben and all the relatives here. So I want to say about that much and say there is no power on heaven or earth that we'll be able to withstand this prayer together we have an unprecedented unified action. <laughs> Nothing will stop us. This is the end. And by the way, I also believe as Toshka says, the Alberta tar sands need to be shut down completely. <laughs> I thank my elders like Ta'a and Shane, elders from this land, elders that we as young people have to listen to. And when your Ta'a says, warrior up, you listen. <laughs> my Ta'a, we have, all of our families have our own Ta'a. My Ta'a couldn't be here today. Many of you might know her name's Audrey Rivers. She does openings all the time in Vancouver. She says, we need to stop that pipeline. She says, no tankers. So I come here today. <laughs> My mom wants me to get in the sunshine, sunshine so she can take a picture of me. <laughs> Well, you listen to your mom as well as your ta'a, right? So. <laughs> but um, I come here as well as a representative of the Squamish Nation Council. I was recently elected with a number of my colleagues like Deborah Baker and Deanna Lewis. And there might be other colleagues here, I'm not sure. There's 16 elected leaders of the Squamish Nation. And... We have many of my own people here, the Squamish people. So make some noise for my people being here today. So I have a few a quick message because I know I'm on a short clock here. The Squamish nation, in league with many other nations, took the federal government to court to challenge them. There's how many First Nations along the pipeline and a tanker route who have challenged him and said, you have not properly consulted us, you have not included us, you have not listened to our concerns, and you're running roughshod over our rights, and we're not going to take it! And I have one last message for my friends, and I say that with all the love and respect. I mean that, love and respect. And I'm gonna say this and lay it down. To my friends in the NDP in Victoria, you promised us that you would fight Kinder Morgan. You promised us you would support indigenous rights. The Squamish Nation is the only First Nation that has challenged the province on the federal approval of the Kinder Morgan pipeline and the province chose to fight us still. So when that court case comes down, and I'm praying that the Squamish Nation win, 
the province the, in Victoria, you need to come to the table, don't appeal, meet us at the table, and let's delay this project, let's work together, let's stand together. United, the people cannot be divided. So arm in arm, we will stand together, we will fight together. This pipeline, this tankers, it's not worth the risk. I'm doing this for my niece and nephews. I'm doing this for the unborn grandchildren. I'm doing this because we cannot take the risk. We cannot. And I don't care how long it takes for Justin Trudeau to hear that. No, we are not taking the risk. So I thank you, each and every one of you, on behalf of my people and my leadership, for coming here and supporting us. Support Indigenous rights. It's not only the right thing to do, it's also going to be the future of this country. It's going to make this country a better place. Support Indigenous rights. Thank you. people out here and especially thank you to the parents who brought their children and the elders. My name is Jessie Cardinal. I'm from the Kikino Métis Settlement in Northern Alberta and to stay within the three minutes I wrote what I'm gonna say today and I want to speak about common sense. A Métis elder recently said we have to go back to common sense. Alberta needs common sense. We have many companies already in Alberta that make trillions of dollars. The money is already there. For all the people who work on pipelines, the jobs are already there. We have thousands of abandoned wells and thousands of miles of pipe in the ground in Alberta that is unused, closed off, and abandoned. Between the multi billion dollar companies and the Alberta carbon tax, we can have a lot of employment already. That is common sense. We have First Nations and Métis wanting to work, wanting to help diversify the economy, wanting to help clean up the mess. We have a province of people who wanted something different, who voted for change, who voted and not the same not not the same old same old when i see alberta developing responsibly then maybe this would make sense but looking at the mess that we live in right now this makes no sense at all hi hey yeah. thank you thank you thank you my name is Ariel Tsaekwe. I'm so proud to say that I don't have a colonial name. My name, Ariel Tsaekwe, means Thunder Woman in my language. And it feels so powerful because I know my brother Clayton Thomas Mueller's name is something with thunder in it. <laughs> Strong Thunderbird Man. And we had our elder Shane talk about his name as Thunderman as well. And I stand here as the feminine to restore that balance between the masculine and the feminine. I am Thunder Woman and I come from the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation or the Kaitale Dene Sotmane people. We live downstream from the largest industrial project on planet Earth, the Alberta Tar Sands. The oil that is going to be pumped through this pipeline comes from my traditional territory. I have seen what it has done. For over 60 years, the Alberta Tar Sands has destroyed, ravaged, contaminated, and broken the spirit of the people in Alberta. I stand here with my sisters, Jessie and Melina. For years we organized the Tar Sands Healing Walk that brought Reuben and Pa'a and so many of these beautiful leaders here in British Columbia to our traditional territory. And it sparked something in them because it sparked the same thing in the three of us that we couldn't stand for this. Just like you can't stand for the Kinder Morgan Pipeline, we can't stand for any more Tar Sands in our backyard. <laughs> I 
climate crisis world, we are talking about developing more tar sands. We are talking about building more pipelines, and it doesn't make any sense. So to Trudeau, I want to say no more tar sands. No more, no more pipelines. No more pipelines. I'm the executive director of an organization called Indigenous Climate Action, and someone asked me recently, what does Indigenous Climate Action mean? This is Indigenous Climate Action. drivers of climate change and build solutions that are grounded and rooted in culture and connection to land and place and reconnecting us to the great spirit and to mother earth. We need indigenous people. This is indigenous climate action. When I talk about the connections to what's going on here, I feel a direct connection. It's not just talking about it in an ethereal kind of way, but the, right now there's a project called the Tech Frontier Mine. It is the largest ever proposed tar sands mine. In a climate crisis world where we're trying to reduce our emissions, we're proposing the largest pipe, or tar sands mine, Tech Frontier. Shameful. That oil Shameful. is going to pump through the Kinder Morgan pipeline. So join our fights to not just stop the Kinder Morgan, but to stop the madness in Alberta's tar sands. Messi Cho, hi hi. Tansegwakia, ni Emelina Miwap and Lobo Kan Maswan ni Anihio Kinaskuntanawao. It's an honor and privilege to be here on Coast Salish territory and standing with all of you today. Hi hi, thank you so much for standing with us. When blue skies will turn brown, blue water will turn black as a result of man's greed. We have two paths to choose from, one that is green and just, and one that is death and destruction. I know I, for one, choose life. We have a reciprocal relationship with Mother Earth. What we do to the land we do to ourselves. Where we come from, like Ariel and Jesse has said, the air is turning black, the children are getting sick, we can no longer drink from the waters and the streams. Our hunters, our people that pick medicines, are getting sick from the animals, from the berries, and from the things that have made us well in the past. And why is it okay for Canada to destroy our places, our sacred places of prayer. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Would we bulldoze their churches? Would we bulldoze their graveyards? No. no. And so why is it okay for them to come into our homeland and bull down the very sacred places where we pray and have prayed for thousands and thousands and thousands of years? Instead, what we have chosen to do in the face of destruction of our homelands is to build a new future that we want to see. A new future where we produce energy from the sacred sun. Where we have sacredly prayed to this sun for millennia. And now, what we have done in the tar sands is build solar projects that power our health centers in our homelands. We built a 20.8 kilowatt system that powers our health center in the heart of the tar sands. And we've also gone to the tiny house warriors and started solarizing their houses. Why can't Canada follow our lead? Why? the land, the water, and the air, and the climate for all people across this earth. Yeah. When I say stop the, you say tar sand. Stop the! Tar sand. Stop the! Tar sand. When I say climate, you say justice. Climate! Justice! Climate! Justice! Hi, hi. Thank you very much. You have to laugh. <laughs> Why have so how? Why be snuck sealed? You squeezed the ancient. I said, 
Greetings, friends and relatives. My name, ancestral name is Amshin. I want to start off by saying this is such a beautiful crowd from up here. <laughs> all colors, <laughs> all shades and sizes and I'm just so happy to be among uh, people that are committed like us to the land and the people that live on it. Together, Stuart and I have six children and 15 grandchildren. And that's what motivates me to be here. I grew up on the waterfront and I, when the tide went out, the table was set. We had clams, crabs, oysters, fish and more fish. And I wanted to keep it that way. It's funny that three other people or two others have come up and talked about Rolling Thunder. Well, Stewart's um, genealogy goes back to 1672 with Rolling Thunder. Kalkamula. Kalkamula means Rolling Thunder. He's carrying on that tradition. <laughs> so on behalf, I want to say a couple more things. One is, when Auntie says warrior up, I warrior up. So on behalf of my children and my grandchildren and the community in Penticton, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for standing up for Mother Earth. Why, Limna? I want to begin by acknowledging the Musqueam people, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh. I have such great reason for enormous gratitude particularly to the Tsleil-Waututh because uh, Joan and I, who is from Tsleil-Waututh, have been together now for 41 years. Without question, Joan is the love of my life. She's my kindred spirit and she is what inspires me and always in a very deliberate way shoves me in the right direction. <laughs> I want to express on behalf of our 15 grandchildren our genuine heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you that are here today. You're such an incredibly beautiful sight from up here. I want to thank you for taking the time, for taking the time out of your busy lives to, to join together, to link arms, to, to walk and march in solidarity and by your very, very presence to give strong public expression to the fact that we will not tolerate the Kinder Morgan Pipeline Project. I know that we are here because we are so deeply concerned about our future generations. We are so deeply concerned about the land and the waters. We're so deeply concerned about all of those things that we know it will only take the united voices 
of such a beautiful assembly as we see before us to stop the Kinder Morgan pipeline and to remind Prime Minister Trudeau that clearly, clearly the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline is not in the national interest. <laughs> Prime Minister Trudeau and the Liberal government is not in the national interest. <laughs> Prime Minister Trudeau has betrayed our trust in regard to the Kinder Morgan Pipeline, the Site C Dam, and a lot of major projects, and they do not deserve our continued support. Just in closing, I want you all to know that you have every reason to walk a little taller upon the land and when you go home you'll know in your hearts that today you did a good thing you did the right thing and when you get up tomorrow I know that we all know and understand this is a campaign that will stretch on into the spring and summer months into the fall but rest assured there will never ever be a Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline project. Before that, I just want to say, if you think about what's happened here, how, how did it come to me that this beloved country that they call Canada has to build their economy by spoiling the earth? I'll sing a song and I want you to think about this fight. Justin Trudeau, look out! We're going to switch up the energy a little bit here. This next speaker coming up is somebody that I just admire so much. She has contributed so much to the fight to protect the sacredness of Mother Earth. She's gifted in a beautiful way with song, and she's going to sing for us today. Her name is Takaya Blaney from the Slam Nation, or as she likes to call it, Sly City, eh? So join me in welcoming Takaya Blaney up to the microphone. Yeah! The ancestors are with us today. I would like to acknowledge the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh um, people 
uh, this off. My, my ancestor, Jagajimo, who's commemorated in our oral, oral history um, as being a leader, someone who defended the lands, the waters, um, our, our traditional resources for the following seven generations to come. Um, that's someone I'm, I'm keeping in mind today as, as it's also my ancestral name. Um, my given name, Takaya, means sacred waters. Um, I'm 17 years old. I am from the Tla'aman First Nations uh, community. Um, growing up, experiencing uh, or rather witnessing the degradation of our of our territory of our waters of our of our sacred sites um, my relationship to that was always uh, one that where I felt a bit helpless because the pollution the pollution of our waters and of our lands took place long before I was born um, and so when I was 10 and I, uh, I found out about the Northern Gateway Pipeline and it was this kind of realization of um, we still have to fight, we still have to fight to, to hold on to our identity, to, to practice our traditions, to be who we are and it's a beautiful fight and it's, and it's beautiful to witness everyone standing here today um, and to experience the, the power of, of the solidarity in all of us. I think being able to being able to stand before you today and being able to use my voice and um, being able to to learn and grow as a part of this community it just it's been such an empowering experience and seeing all of the youth here today um, also just reminds me um, just how how powerful this next generation is is going to be you know. <laughs> Growing up, being being brought to this to these rallies, being brought to, to the to the front lines of this of this fight, and and being told that their voice is important, that they are the leaders of tomorrow. I cannot wait to see the changes that they will make and and are making. As um. As Gujo said, this is this is how you want to fight. You know, it's 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 not just about what we are united against, but what we are united for, and the love in our hearts, and the prayers uh, that we share, and and uh, the songs that we sing, the eagle feathers in our hands. You know, this this unity of of peoples and cultures for for our shared future. Um, as my as my cookba, my grandfather says, uh, you have a voice, be heard. And you know this is um, if you have a gift and if you have a passion, then it's your responsibility to share that. And we all have a sacred obligation and responsibility to to that which gives us life, to the air, to the water, to our lands. And so let's take this opportunity to work together to create the future that we want to see. Thank you. To welcoming the Nelson House Cree Nation, the Joya Cree Nation, Chief Kevin Hart. It's so good to see so many brothers and sisters here today from all the four races. This is true unity in action here. This is you. Human unity. We are the first peoples. We are the human beings of Mother Earth. Seeing you all here, are you all ready? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the time is now. Mother Earth needs us more than ever. The water and the land. I've sat here and I want to acknowledge 
the Coast Salish brothers and sisters for allowing me to be on your traditional territory, as well as the leadership and everybody that's here. I greet and I lift you all up, the chiefs, the, the water protectors, the grandmothers and the grandfathers. They're the ones that laid down this historic day today with all their life's work. Let's give them a big round of applause, our grandmothers and grandfathers. As, uh, as my brother Clayton said, yes, I've been fighting for climate change and uh, been fighting for the environment. I fought at the UN level for the indigenous platform when world leaders did not want to support it. I sat there around that table with an elder from the NWT and I told him, they're going to talk about us and we're not at that table. You know what that elder told me? He says, you're the chief, lead the way. And that's what we did. We went and grabbed that banner and we said, if you want to st start talking about the indigenous people in the world, here we are, we're the indigenous people. Let's talk about the land and water. There's so many of us here. I want to, I lift you all up brothers and sisters because yes the time is now most importantly you know the corporate welfare that occurs right now with the fossil fuel industry when you see the homelessness I seen the homelessness here in Vancouver and it's just heartbreaking I see the homelessness across this country I see our veterans being mistreated and for those that have fought for this country and yet the fossil fuel industry gets subsidized each and every year by 38.4 billion dollars. That's 50 billion dollars Canadian each and every year that the Canadian government subsidizes the fossil fuel industries. Meanwhile, my people live in squalor and third world conditions. I don't even have proper drinking water. And we're here fighting for clean water in the land. It's so encouraging to see you here, brothers and sisters. We have to send this message to Justin Trudeau, the indigenous people of this land, we've had enough. It's obviously the brothers and sisters in here, you've had enough. So I greet you all. I lift you all up. And with that, I honor you all. And again, I say, are you ready? Are you ready? It's our time, are you ready? When BC stood up and built an unbreakable wall against Enbridge, you know, Stephen Harper approved that pipeline, just like Justin Trudeau approved Kinder Morgan. Yeah. Government approvals don't mean nothing. Yeah. It only takes one First Nation to assert their territorial jurisdiction, and that's what the Wet'suwet'en did, and they won that fight. Yeah. So please join me in welcoming Chief Namux and Chief Zagat from the Wet'suwet'en Nation! Denny Zayu, you! Sakai Zayu, you! Sky Zay. As was said, I am Namux. I sit as the highest ranking chief of the Beaver Clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. Beside me is my father clan, Chief Tsekot of the Lixilio. You've listened to the words that have been said. I hope you keep them with you. Remember that you are the power. It is your heart that will steer you. That's how you win. It's not elected officials and it sure as hell is not corporations. When we took on Enbridge, they, took, they said that this giant, it's gonna continue. They made it sound like these things were done. No, they're not done until you say it's done. When corporations steal, steer government as they did with Harper, you got this here Prime Minister selfie happening and he's not done nothing for you. Last year I spoke at the United Nations in New York a day after they said that they would support and uphold UNDRA. We said we'd be back in one year to give a report card on Canada and the Prime Minister and his cabinet. So this year we went to Geneva and we gave that report card to the world, to the committee to eradicate racial discrimination. 
and it was a big fat red F. It was a red F because they don't treat you as human beings, they treat you as a commodity. You know, this past week, the Premier of Alberta said that she was going to quit shipping oil to British Columbia. I want her to take the goddamn pipelines with her. In our territory, they proposed 11 pipelines. Not one was built. And we couldn't have done it by ourselves. You never work in isolation. You've got to have like-hearted and like-minded people with you. And I thank you for being here today. It's such an honor to be here with this here beautiful crowd. I'm rather intimidated because you're a scary bunch. Now it's time to do that. And if I'm intimidated, imagine what the government and industry is thinking. I don't want to use up too much of your time. The words I've heard today and those that are coming are so powerful. I'm going to go home just proud and I'll tell our nation of what happened down here. You've become part of our history. You made history in Canada, not only with the Wet'suwet'en. But what I've asked Denny Zakat to do is to share our Seneh, our sacred song. This is a song that blesses everything and it means that you've done the job proper. This is the most powerful song that we have. He will do his Lixilio song. Each of our five clans have one, but he is Lixilio. He will do his sacred song. And all I ask is you don't record it nor take pictures. Yes. We come from Sukhwatmuk Ulu, the land of the spilling waters. From the very first drop, as it melts up our glaciers and the mountains in our territory that travel down and impact, touch every living thing all the way to here to the Salish seas. We come from the land of the spilling waters and we're here to tell Trudeau you're not bringing that pipeline through our lands. We're here to tell Notley the same thing. You're not bringing this pipeline through our lands. The land of the spilling waters. And I'm so happy to see everybody act on this call to warrior up. <laughs> to be here with Ta'a, with the George family. Our families go back generations. And it was my grandfather, George Manuel, that was friends and comrades with the chief Dan George. So our families are like this. Our fingers come together to make this fist for solidarity. That they can't penetrate our lands with their dirty oil pipelines. We're building 10 tiny houses to be put on the path, strategically on the path of the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline. We have three built already. We're gonna start our fourth soon. We're ready to deploy some of these tiny houses, so be alert, get your ready. Clayton, listen to Clayton give you the, give you the number again, but we are going to be p putting these tiny houses out there. One of the biggest threats right now is a thousand man construction camp. So we don't want these thousand men coming into our lands to construct this pipeline, because with these thousand men, in these camps, in these indi industry camps of transient workers that, that come to these camps. We see it in all of our relatives, communities that are impacted by man camps right now. The increase of violence against women. The, the, the sexual attacks against our women and it's the indigenous women that are first impacted by this violence that happens. It is our mothers and as, as Ruben said, I'm a midwife. We know as women and all you women here, all you life givers, I love you. You're birthing the nation that's going to defend the sacred as well. From that 
the water that's in the womb as the mothers give birth, that water that connects us from the same drop that drops from our glaciers to the same water that's in our wombs to the same water in the Salish seas, we will defend it. By any means, we will defend the sacred. Cook's Jam. Simon. There you go. Everybody. Really appreciate your warm welcomes. And I want to thank the Tsleil-Waututh Nation, Coast Salish, Haida, all the First Nations of uh, British Columbia. You guys have been uh, at the forefront of a lot of these fights and a lot of legal precedences that uh, have taken place here in British Columbia that all First Nations are now benefiting from across the country. Uh, my name is Serge Udzi Simon. My Mohawk name, Big Udzi, means uh, he takes more than three minutes. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, actually a little complicated to uh, explain. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you were just you were, you were just talking about uh, just a minute ago uh, how uh, you know it was hard for government, the conservatives. Now the liberals, and now we're running out of parties to try to trust. I just think it's maybe time to start looking at some other avenues. I came down here about two years ago looking for allies to help in, in the fight for, to fight Energy East. And uh, the chiefs of Quebec weren't totally ready yet. So I came out west came down here with Derek Nipanak and uh, Chief Arnold Gardner and we came to sit with uh, Grand Chief Phillips to try to get our, our alliance going, something like you know East-West Alliance to fight these tar sand pipelines. Uh, it took a while but now uh, the alliance that we were looking for morphed into a treaty and the treaty now comprises of 150 First Nation chiefs Right across the pipeline path, right up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we also have uh, the uh, the Great Sioux Nation or the Lakota, Dakota people. They signed off on the treaty, so we have allies there. I also have um, this. This one's really surprising. Was uh, the uh, First Nation of Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> They signed off on it too. So what I have here, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Uh, I have a simple message here from our regional chief, Ghislaine Picard, who was instrumental in getting support from all the chiefs at the Quebec table. So this is from 42 chiefs across our, our province here. Quick, quick, all participants and supporters. It is with it is with regret that I could not be uh, with you today, but I'm very happy that both Ganesadaga Grand Chief Serge Simon and Iquanishit Chief Jean-Charles Pietachot made the trip to your territory to stand with you in solidarity against the Kinder Morgan Tar Sands Pipeline, uh, a project uh, that violates undrip principles and denies our most fundamental human rights. Um, they have my full support to advance our regional position. Your battle is our battle, and we are 100% behind you. So our commitment through the Treaty Alliance against the Tar Sand expansion, made up of 150 First Nations and U.S. tribes, put, put a stop to Energy East and Northern Gateway pipelines. But it does not stop there. The victory is not complete. Our next stop is Kinder Morgan. And any other project that will challenge the principles of our alliance. We have rights, but more importantly, we have duties. We have a sacred duty as nations to defend and protest, protect Mother Earth and peoples all over Turtle Island from these kinds of threats. Together, 
uh, I'm sorry, my eyes are really shut. Uh, together we can, we can and will make a difference. Thank you for your dedication. We stand in solidarity. Okay, I got 10 seconds. All right, so uh, I just want a, a quick reminder. Uh, like Ruben says, I'm from Oka. And uh, back in 1990, I saw firsthand what happens when arrogance prevails and, and diplomacy, uh, diplomacy is tossed to the side. And I sure hope and pray that that never happens again because the alternative is just, believe me, the Ganesadaga suffered so much. It took us almost 25 years to get over uh, the problems that came with the uh, 1990 Oka crisis. Still things that are very, very fresh in my memory that will never be forgotten. The human rights abuses and uh, the social, political, and economic disintegration of my community, a lot of people didn't see that when we lived through it. So we thank you for all your support, and we're gonna be with you all the way. Shinchas Kriwal Skaum, Kaklat Pupi Mutashlatriam. My name is uh, Shadow Wolf in our language, known as Chief Daryl Bob of the um, Kaklat community in the Statlium Nation. I just wanted to thank you all for being here. I want to start off by saying corporate corruption at its highest level is happening right now. But I also want to remind the people in this crowd, and I want to thank the nations of the coast for hosting this and honoring uh, us an opportunity to speak. But I want to say something. I want to remind people that this is a ceremony. A ceremony of unifying the people of the rainbow to fight for the rights for our children who were, we, they are born, born with the responsibility to be loved. We carry that for the women in our lives, for the female, Thank you for bringing us into this world. For Mother Earth, thank you for providing everything for us. You know what's going on today? We're living in a time of prophecy. A time now where people of all races will stand up and fight against what's not right for our children that are yet to be born. These people here in front, you standing out there and your family and friends that support this, we're just warming up. We had people in 1990 supporting the Mohawks. We had people inside that place. We had roadblocks. We had cops turning dogs loose on our people. But we stood our ground. It was the women that got up and said, no, we're not going to let up. That's when I say we'll kick butt and take no prisoners. Don't slow down, stay on track. Stay focused, stay connected. An elder once told me that if you take a blade of sweet grass and you take one strand, you can break it. But if you hold a whole sweet grass together and try break it, you can't do it because we're family. Yeah. 
We were born with the responsibility to look after Mother Earth, and by golly, that's what we're going to do. What they say is, watch out, the train is coming, and we're the train. We're going to run you over because it's ours to look after. Not a government and not certainly not a damn corporation. Be strong, send love, and take care of yourself, and support this movement. Anyways, my time's up. I just wanted to thank you for this little bit of time and I do certainly apologize to my nephew for um, not um, being there at the, at the uh, press release yesterday. I just wanted to, before I close off, I'll, I wanted to hear everybody say, say something, uh, do something here for me. It's a song that I've learned uh, over the years. It goes something like this, I just want to practice run, okay? Kinder Morgan out of Slay with Two Territory. Try that. Kinder Morgan out of Slay with Two Territory. Okay. okay, here we go. You ready? I'll just do one, one quick one just so we can send a message. How about that? sacred water you know that's part of what she seen and so with that you know she spoke to the Prime Minister and he shook in his boots in front of the entire country she reminded him about the promises that he made so join me in welcoming this young person up to the microphone Autumn Pelche yeah. My name is Autumn Pelche. I'm 13 years old. Um, I'm from Ma Manitoulin Island in Ontario. I would like to say thank you to the Treaty Alliance for inviting me here today and acknowledge the ancestors of this territory. I've been trying not to think about the pipelines and the development of the decisions being made about constructing more line, pipelines. It makes me sad because it means more of Mother Earth will be destroyed, more animals will be impacted, especially the salmon in this territory. Everything is connected in this ecosystem. When one thing is gone, then eventually everything will slowly start dying as well. As women, it is our responsibility to stand up for our water, stand up for our Mother Earth. Water is calling out for us to help her. Water is alive and has a spirit. That is what our people believe. And we all know we we all know we would not be be here without the water. Nothing would be here. 
We have to protect that what we have to protect what fresh natural drinking water we have left. The way humans are going, that time where we will be fighting over water will come fast. I'm not doing this work for fun. I'm doing it in honor of my auntie Josephine Mendamin, who has dedicated her whole life to helping our water. She literally prays every day. She will stand in the coldest of waters and offer her petition to the water and give thanks. If she is not near water, she will stand in the snow. These things she does for a reason. I hear her and watch her. I may not be an elder, but I try it. I try to understand why she does it. So I must do it. We need to help her and our planet needs us right now. Not just here in Canada, but all over the world. We can't keep wanting to make money off our resources. There are other ways where we where we don't have to destroy the lands and contaminate our water. There's only so much destruction Mother Earth can tolerate. All the digging and fracking into our Mother Earth, open wounds and leaving them open on Mother Earth must be so painful. One day she will not be able to handle it. Mother Earth doesn't need us. We need, we need her in order to live. Mother Earth has been here for thousands of years before us and it's only take, taken, it's only take us so much time to destroy her. Mother Earth is trying to tell us something, but only some, some of us are listening. It makes me, my spirit happy to know that there are people, that, that people are gathered here today in unity for the water and the land. Water unites us. It brings us together and it connects us. We come from water and the water we come from is from generations. I come from my mother's water. Her mom comes from her mother's water and her great great grandmother comes from her mother's water and so on. We are, we are all part of our ancestors' water. This land is where your ancestors are bur buried. This land is your land, and we are here today to stand up and say no to no more to no more pipelines. Together we rise to help protect this land. One day I will be an elder and an ancestor, and I hope my children or grandchildren have to stand up to protect our planet. We have to do something today to make the changes for the future, so we can have a future. Let's stand together and rise as a nation who fought for our planet. Miigwech. We're really, really honored to have him here. Um, sorry, Woo! my notes. Uh, oh yeah, Chief Pitasho from in Indonesian, uh, from the province that they call Quebec. So join me in welcoming to the microphone. He's going to be speaking through an interpreter. No, 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 Quebec, and Eno, Eno. I went and Mr. Mendendo did not need both at what the Mr. Hagan at Antigin, we put me at the Mani, Anam Pandi, Jacquet to Gohanian, to Gohanine, Dakota, Dakota, Pateta, that one to then. Lilan Cossi, no home to Anane, and when any when Mr. Hagan, or Teta Angie, me to what went in Tayamon, Mamon Tainta Batanda, a woman in the Atoradine, Mutte, one at Tahian. Pieta ho, ten ye gata gonja, mute mute yanem pan, e no mi an in mani with it, I am with ye. Mr. when it known, Mr. Nakamit no, Gatta here, Minuat, your wife, Pantina Gatana. Woo! Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm the translator for uh, the new chief from Pieta show, Pieta show. Um, I'm a former chief, Real McKenzie, I'm from Northern Quebec. I worked for many years with uh, Chief Petasho. We are 11 communities forming a nation, and we spread all north of Quebec, 25,000 members. We still speak in our own language, 100%. <laughs> and we still protecting, occupy our land, hunting, fishing, and trapping. Uh, special uh, remarks for our elders because elders, as you, as we know, how much are really important in our, commu our communities. So, for us in our nation, the elders is the one, uh, the one people. It's between the elders and us and the children. So their vision, they're very important. So we listen to our elders to keep and protect and defend our rights on our homeland. Okay. So Chief Pietashu just said to you on our uh, Inu language. He mentioned uh, three battles, 
The first one was the uh, Anticosti Island. Offshore where he's come from. And uh, there was an oil company there trying to make exportation on that island. But the good news is he won the case. Oh. No. Big issue, big issue. Second one was Standing Rock. Standing Rock. When he showed you five uh, fingers, he said I went there five times. And believe it or not, we had many things happen there. When Chief Itasha take over a speech to the Sioux tribe there, uh, I was also a very emotional feeling when he addressed to the people like he did on his own language. He do that because he respects so much his own language. They keep it for so long, for our children and grandchildren. That's why we 100% using our, our language. And it's very important. We talked a few days before we came here. Uh, we, when we went there the first time in Sandy Iraq, we didn't know anyone there. We were far away from home, but we were believed there a case against the, the Dakota Access uh, Pipeline, just like here, Kinder Morgan. So when we went there, we just brought it like you are here. We were looking around, and the first elder we, we met there, it's the one started the case. Name is GR. It's a spiritual man. We're really lucky to meet him. There were 28 person when he started the, the, the barricades there, when they stand up the, the camp. Him, his wife, children, and grandchildren. And then Chief Itasho and the spiritual man connected together for their belief to protect and defend their rights. So for the time being there, Chief, we really, really believe what we're doing here now. Because he just said to you, I just see my vision when I stand there the first day of Standing Rock was crowded just like here today. That's what he said. And, and to, conclude, to conclude, he says, uh, we heard uh, many chief uh, order. Uh, yeah, I got to finish, I'm sure. <laughs> Five seconds, okay. Pieta show means on our own language, traveling with the wind. That's his uh, traditional name. So the wind, he said today, when I took my flight, uh, he blew in the right way to come here to bring this to bring my full support. Thank you. Big respect to the Inu Nation here representing the fight against Kinder Morgan. It's with our hearts and our minds and our prayers. Everybody here has been touched by Standing Rock. Everybody here has been touched by Standing Rock. And this, the carrier of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe, Orville Looking Horse from the great Sioux Nation, the Ocheti Sakoan, he had an article in The Guardian recently. And what he said was, is that Standing Rock is everywhere. Let's say that. Standing Rock is everywhere. 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 Yeah. Our speaker here is Linda Black Elk. Linda was on the front lines of Standing Rock for months. She's a botanist by profession. She was part a leader in the in the healing society there that was doing medical treatment for people who were being assaulted by the police apparatus of the state of North Dakota. She's an incredible leader. And we're very honored to have her here to conclude our speeches for today. So join me in welcoming Linda Black Elk to the mic. Thank you so much. Thank you, my relative. I know you guys are tired, but every time there's there's so much more to come. And every time you start feeling tired during this fight, I want you to remember these elders who spoke before me and how they have been getting shot at and arrested for decades before this. So every time you dare to feel tired, pick yourselves up and remember them. And remember that we have to keep fighting. We have to bring that torch to our treated you at standing 
Rock, you came into the medic tent. I gave you our traditional medicine, that medicine that is so sacred to me. When I was there protecting the protectors, I got pepper sprayed 12 times. I'm a mom, I'm a teacher. I got pepper sprayed 12 times. I got shot by rubber bullets. I got attacked by dogs, me personally. I got shot with a beanbag round. I um, was, was sprayed with water cannons in sub-freezing temperatures until my clothes froze to my body. Hey! That is because the oil industry will not stop no. until they have committed cultural and even physical genocide against all of our people. And that's why we need you to keep standing. You can't get tired. You cannot let it down. You cannot sit down and let this happen. And so, I want you guys to remember, when I look at my children, I'm going to go back home tomorrow because I'm there, i got to fight the Keystone XL pipeline next. Yeah. And when I'm down there, and I feel like I'm going to lose heart, and I start to feel discouraged, I'm going to remember all of you, and that you guys are up here cutting the head off of the black snake! halfway up right now like I said thank you really much my name is Biles I'm from the Simshan nation I'm from the main family the Nelson family my grandmother was Mary Rose Jackson. She used to run the Indian Friendship Center kitchen. And her, she went as Joanne. I come from a long line of matriarchs. And I'm here to tell you there's enough of us queens to take care of things we don't need the Queen of England. We're already here. I told her in my dream time that she wasn't the queen. She came to me and she stood beside me and I was supposed to be dancing down at the bottom but I was observing instead and she came and stood beside me and I, I just said matter-of-factly that she wasn't the queen <laughs> and she kind of scurried off and I followed her down the stairs and I tapped her on the shoulder and I just said do you recognize me she said yes I said good so I'm just here with a humble message, I'm a little bit more quiet, because I'd rather be in a much more soft place with all of you. There's a lot, we can get all riled and it's good because we're too complacent. But there's a part of us that when we walk, we walk humbly to where we're going. And I would just love to share the water song with you. Because Thank you to the water. Me. And don't lose sight of this when you leave. It's too easy to lose sight of it, so don't lose your sight, okay? So some of the some of the chiefs and some of the leaders make a path for them to come right through. Some of them are going to do interviews and some of them are going to lead it. So if you can make a, a, a path open up straight to the goalpost, follow the leaders. Wait, 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 wait. So I just wanted to say one thing because this came to me because the ancestors told me this, okay? Because there is original law. There's a law that supersedes any law that you could write down right now. They have reminded me that I call on all the carvers to enforce the original law 
and to create shaming polls that are in the way of every single one that they try, every territory that they go into. I call upon the carvers to create that shaming poll because you'd have to do something really powerful to remove that. There's an order to things, and this is why our hereditaries walk out first. Chitta, do ya, do ya, do ya, chitta. 